Hey everyone, it's Mark from Vintage Stuff. It's been a little while since I've done my last video, and I wanted to take a moment to talk about that before I uh, go into today's video. Creating videos takes a lot of time and effort. I don't exactly have the best setup for any of this, or the best equipment either, but I do the best with what I have. I like doing videos to share my knowledge, and I hope that everyone else finds it useful as well. Um, I thank everyone who is already subscribed to my channel, but uh, it would definitely help me out a lot if, you, if I had more subscribers so I could re-monetize my channel. I'm really excited to show off today's project though, so let's get to it. So a couple months ago, Lazy Game Reviews put out a video about a product called the Thermaltake X-Ray, which was a cigarette lighter and cup holder uh, adapter made for a computer. When I saw this video, I was inspired and I was like, I have to have this product. Since they're not readily available, I decided to make my own and put a, um, my own spin on it uh, to make it a little more useful for, the, uh, for my own needs as well. So this is what I ultimately came up with. So the initial, insp initial inspiration for the, how, how, this, how this build came about was I started looking up a uh, power adapter on eBay and I found this three port panel that when I looked at the specs I realized it's almost the exact same size as a five and a quarter computer bay socket. So I grabbed one of those and it came with the power socket, what originally was just a voltage meter, and a dual USB socket. So I decided to go a little more, bling this out a little more than I would usually since it's for my own needs. And originally this just came with a little plastic flip cover for the power socket. But uh, I decided to make this look a little more like an authentic automobile. This is a, I believe, an uh, Audi uh, power socket cover. Um, I decided to upgrade the voltage meter to a voltage and current meter so I can see how much current's being drawn by the USB socket and anything I plug into the um, accessory socket. And I also ended up upgrading the USB socket. It originally came, the, the three port um, faceplate came with this three amp maximum uh, USB dual socket and I decided to upgrade it to a quick charge um, style dual port socket and that will allow me to draw up to 4 amps. I ended up mounting it to a 5 and a quarter to 3 and a half drive bay adapter and I ended up just cutting out the holes as needed for the three sockets. Flip it around. See that in there where the 3 and a half inch drive uh, hook cutout is. Um, I put a fuse holder on it. Uh, I decided putting a fuse on this might be a good idea. I just you chose one of these panel fuse holders because I had a whole bunch of them laying around. It takes a uh, glass type fuse. I used a 7 amp fuse, which is probably a little overkill, um, 5 amp would probably be fine, um, but I also used a Molex type connector. Uh, I looked up the specs on it and it will allow up to 10 amp of draw, and the wiring I use also will support up to 10 amp uh, draw, so I should be perfectly fine with a 7 amp fuse, but if I were to do this again I'd probably just throw a 5 amp fuse in there. Well, let me plug it into my bench power supply. I've tested this with a computer power supply as well, but this is just a little easier for me for demo purposes. And for testing this, I picked up this tool. It's a Klein Tools ET910 USB tester and the reason I chose this particular unit is because it has a load test 
capability built into it. So I'm going to show this off to you too. So I'm going to put a 3 amp load on it. And as you can see it passes that test. So in order to really load up this socket I have another device over here, high draw device, which is cool in its own right. This is a Cool IT or Cool It Systems. Let's see if that focuses. It's a USB beverage cooler. I picked that up at a uh, thrift store thinking it was pretty cool. And I have another um, simpler USB voltage detector here. So we're going to plug this in. We'll show you the draw on that. And then we'll pull another 3 amp load. And that passes as well. And of course I could do this with a regular power adapter if I want. So what I'm going to do next is I am just going to show you the old socket with this same test to show that this one can't draw as much amperage as this uh, uh, new one I put in. Let's power this down. Pick this up. So we'll put the that cooler load first. And then we'll try to pull another three amps on top of that. You can see the voltage drops. Well, in this case it passed even though it's not supposed to. Try it again. Eh, it's not supposed to actually pass that test. Well, anyway, I was uh, I tried this test a few more times, and uh, it still was passing every time. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. Originally, it was failing most of the time when I ran that test. But you get the point. You can clearly see that the voltage dips, and that shouldn't be a passing. There you have it. I think that about covers the build on this. Um, it was a fun little build. Um, it ended up costing me a little more than I was expecting by the time everything was said and done, by the time I blinged this all out. It can be done fairly cheaply for the simplest build with this three-port panel with the three sockets, I think was like $15. Um, the, the, the drive adapter, the five and a quarter, three and a half drive adapter, I think was like $8. And... I already had most of the other wiring and parts that I needed for this. They're fairly simple to come by even if you don't have them. 
So as you can see, I got the unit installed in my computer, and I'm really happy with this. As you might notice, I'm rocking the uh, Lan Lee PC60 case. I've been uh, using this case for the, my PC builds for the last 20 years or so. I bought the case brand new. It's a really nice solid built case. One thing you might want to note if you decide to buy one of these cases is the only problem I've ever had with them is the plastic clips that hold the front cover in place seem like they get really brittle with age. And the, the ones that came with the case originally, they just become really brittle and break. You can replace them. I think it's about $15 for a kit of all of the replacements. They do still sell them. And they seem like they're a much better quality plastic now. Another thing I forgot to mention earlier is one of the reasons I decided to put this in a floppy drive tray cage rather than just mounting it to the uh, faceplate cover is I was worried that the force of inserting the um, power socket for the 12 volt car adapter would tend to push the faceplate in. So those are more of a, not really designed to take any force. So I think that's about it. I'm going to see if I can find some links to the parts that I used and put them in the video description. So if you're interested in doing one of these builds yourselves, uh, hopefully that'll help you out. I personally, I sourced all my parts from eBay. I found it a little, that's probably one of the cheapest places you can find this stuff, but uh, well, I'll see what I can find for you. So I think that's about it for this video. So thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed it.